So let me illustrate one of the inconvenient truths here with this remarkably high profile and, and well um, uh, characterized study, which is this GWAS study. GWAS stands for Genome Wide Association Study, where you look at all these common variants across all the three million nucleotides, bases, letters of the alphabet, and you see any of them are different in frequency. And here's the point I want to make about this. These are highly significant statistically results. But let's look at the second um, rank here, 57, which I highlighted slightly. If we go over to the right where it says P, that's the p-value. That's the level of statistical significance. So this is 10 to the minus 9. The usual statistical significance we talk about is 0 0.05. That's 10 to the minus 2. This is 10 to the minus 9. This is hugely significant. But the inconvenient truth here is the reason this is so significant is because this is 150,000 people where you have enormous power, statistical power, to see tiny differences between populations. So if we look next to that p-value, we have a thing called OR, which is the odds ratio. And that means, what are the odds? What is the increase in odds of your having schizophrenia if you inherit the, the, the variant that's associated with schizophrenia? What's the chances? So in the general population, if you assume your odds are 1 out of 100, your odds go up to 1.07 out of 100. It's less than a 10% increase in tiny odds to be, which is not a very meaningful result. You're not going to predict anybody's likelihood of having schizophrenia from something that increases your odds such a tiny bit. And the reason it has such a small effect, if you go back to the other part that's yellowed here where it says frequency, that's the frequency of the variant that's significantly associated with schizophrenia in the cases and the controls. And what you can see is, in the cases, about 32% of cases have the risk form of the gene, but 30% of controls have the risk form of the gene. So the difference in frequency is 30% of people versus 32% of people. These are tiny differences. And this is an important point to make here. These are not genes that cause schizophrenia. These are genes that increase risk and you have to accumulate risk factors to be tipped over the scale. It's like how much weight you put on the scale. This is not different from most common medical conditions. Most common medical conditions are not caused by genes. They're caused by risk factors which accumulate. So cholesterol does not cause heart attack or stroke. It increases your risk of having them if you have high blood pressure and other risk factors. This is the same thing with these things. These are weak risk factors by themselves. But this is also potentially a little bit misleading because thinking about one gene at a time is not the right way to think about illness. Illness is about the accumulation of risk factors. None of these single risk factors by themselves will do much to move someone towards illness.